Good evening and welcome to Mrs. Spencer's Math Lab. Thank you for returning again and those of you, of you who are coming for the first time, thank you for tuning in today. Let's get ready to investigate integers again. While I'm introducing the day, the lesson for today, get your pencil, your paper, a straight edge, if you did not already draw a, a, um, a line, and also turn your volume up and hit the, so that the, it will be full screen and we'll be ready to go. Last week we investigated integers and we were doing addition and subtraction. Today we're going to add multiplication and division. Let's review. The integers include what numbers? And I'll pause for a moment for you to think about the answers so that I can give you a chance to give me the answers. I hope you said the positive whole numbers, the negative whole numbers, and zero. When we use this number line, we always start at what point? the zero. When we're going in the positive direction, we go from left to right. When we're going in a negative direction, we go from right to left. I'm going to ask you some questions. What integer is the opposite of two? And that's easy. The opposite of two is negative two. They are opposites. What is the absolute value of negative six? And we talked about absolute value last week and we said that is the distance a number is from zero. And of course we also know that it's a distance. So you should have told me positive six. All right. What is, and I'm going to this time write it on the board, see if you remember what I'm asking you. What is the answer to that? All right, this says these symbols mean the absolute value of five. Five is five steps from zero. So the answer is five. Absolute value always has what sign? I hope you said positive because it is a distance and distance would not be a negative number at all. All right, let's add negative 10 plus 10, positive 10. All right. I'm going to put a couple up here at another time. At, at, all right, 12 plus 12, positive 12 plus 12. All right, negative 6 plus 10. All right, let's work on those three for a moment. Let's see if you recall. Remember, if you're using a number line that we start at zero, and if it's negative, we go to the left. If it's positive, we go to the right. All right, we should be finished with the first one. I hope you said that it is zero. We see that negative 10 and positive 10 are opposites, and the sum of opposites is always zero. All right, the next one is positive 12 plus positive 12. And notice each time we say a number, we want to say the number with the proper sign. All right, we've been doing that all the time because we learned to do work with the positive integers all, all, for several grade, first grades in our elementary school education. All right, so positive. 12 plus positive 12 is positive 24. And we don't have to write the positive signs. All right, negative 6 plus 10. 
I hope you got positive four. All right. Let's take a few more. 18 plus negative 20. Eighteen plus negative twenty. All right. I paused a moment to let you do it. I hope your sum, your sum is negative two. All right. I hope you got them all correct, and we're going to do some subtractions. But let's first review what we did for adding. When we're adding integers, a positive plus a positive equals a positive sum. When we're adding integers, a negative plus a negative equals a negative sum, and we add. When we are adding a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, either way, it's the sign of the integer with the largest absolute value. And we subtract the absolute values, the larger absolute value minus the smaller absolute value. All right, so that reviews the addition. So let's look at what we did here. Negative 10 plus positive 10. And they are opposites, as I said before. So that means that we are going negatively 10 steps and then positively 10 steps, and we're at zero. Zero has no sign. 12 plus 12 means we're going 12 plus 12. We're adding two positives, so the sum is positive, and we added the absolute values. Negative 6 plus 10 equals 4. We know that this, the sign of the sum is going to be that of the number, the integer with the larger absolute value. So 10 has an absolute value of 10, and negative 6 has an absolute value of 6. And then that means the answer is going to be positive. And negative 6 plus 10 equals 4, because 10 minus 6 is 4. All right, 18 plus negative 20 equals negative 2. All right, again, the absolute value of 18 is 18. The absolute value of negative 20 is 20. 20 minus 18 is 2. And the absolute value, of, the larger absolute value is 20. The absolute value of negative 20 is 20. All right, I hope you were able to get all of those correctly done. And let's move to some subtractions. All right, let's, let's subtract positive 18 minus 9. All right, let's do 9 minus 18. Positive 9 minus positive 18. All right, let's do 26 minus negative 4. And negative 40 minus negative 15 and we'll see what we do with those. I'll pause a moment. Integers are very fun to work with and we use them in a lot of ways. We use them to <coughs> evaluate expressions. We use them in solving equations. We use them in many ways as you will see as we go on with this tutoring process. All right, 18 minus 9, of course, that's old stuff. We've been doing that from 
grade two, three. All right, so 18 minus nine is nine. All right, of course, we don't even need to go through the absolute values. Both of these are positives. The answer is positive, but it means that we are, at, we are adding 18 plus the opposite of nine, which is which negative nine, and we add a positive and a negative. We just finished doing that. We're gonna subtract 18 minus nine, and we get nine. And both of them are positive. The large absolute value here is positive. All right, let's do nine minus 18. Turn it around. So that's nine plus the opposite of 18. Remember we did this on the number line and we saw what happened. So it's the same thing as adding nine plus negative 18. So let's see what we get here. All right, the sign of the large absolute value is negative. The absolute value, 18, minus the absolute value, 9, is 9. So the difference is negative 9. All right, let's go to the next one. I hope you have already worked these out. 26 minus negative 4 is 26, plus the opposite of negative 4, which is 4. And the answer is 30. All right. Now, we figured this out last week on the number line, and we found out that when we go up there to do these problems, we're really, really doing addition because we're going 26 in the positive direction, and minus negative 4 means to go 4 in the positive direction four more in the positive direction, and that gives us a sum of 30. And the last one, negative 40 minus negative 15 is negative 40, plus the opposite of 15, negative 15, which is 15. That's some, the difference is going to be negative, how do we know that? Because the large absolute value is 40. 40 minus 15. All right, we should have gotten negative 25. If you did all of these correctly, give yourself an A. If you didn't, I hope that you will let me know what bothered you. One thing about tutoring, what we do is troubleshoot. We try to find what is bothering the student and work that out, and then you're good to go from there. All right, today we want to go to another two other operations with integers. First, we want to go with multiplication. And multiplication, if I gave you a problem and said 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, most of you would look at it and say that's 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Now, if we've already gotten that principle, because by definition, Multiplication is adding the same number a certain number of times. So this is 4 times 2. So sometimes if we don't know our tables, some of you who are still in lower grades, and we have 4 times 2, all we need to do is write 4 twos and add them. And we'll have the same answer, which is 8. So when, with, with that in mind, let's go to multiplication then of integers.
All right, let's take two times nine. Two times, well, I'll get rid of twos. Five times eight. All right. Seven times three. All right, let's just do these. All of these, we notice both of the factors are, and we call the numbers that we multiply factors. And the answer in multiplication is called a product. So we're multiplying factors two and nine. And that's the same as either adding nine twos or two nines, which is easier. All right, so that would be, I'm going to do two nines. Nine plus nine. And the sum is 18. A positive 9 plus a positive 9 is 18. So 2 times 9 is 18. Now you say, I knew that all the time. Of course. But then we're going to get to some other numbers and we're going to apply the same principle. All right, 5 times 8. 5 times 8 could be 5 eighths or 8 fives. And of course, most of us count by fives better than eight. So most of us would do eight fives. And most of us can count by tens, by fives rather. And we know that eight fives is 40. Okay. So that's 40, positive 40. So a positive five times a positive eight is positive 40. And let's do this last one I have here, seven times three. And of course, you know the answer. You can add three sevens or seven threes. All right, let's add three sevens. I always choose seven plus seven is twelve. Seven plus twelve is fourteen, and fourteen plus seven is twenty-one. All right, and so we're adding. All positives, and we get a positive. All right, so 7 times 3 is 21. Positive 21. So, so far, when we're multiplying two positives, the product is positive. All right, so I think we already knew that because we've done that in elementary school. And this is the first kind of multiplication we learned. So let's go now to two negatives and let's see how that works. All right, let's do negative two times negative four. Okay. Negative two times negative four. All right, so right, right away we know we're going to do 2 times 4. So this is what I'm doing over here, 2 times 4. And so 2 times, two times negative 4 is negative 4 plus negative 4. And that's negative, that's, that's negative 4. plus negative four, and that's negative eight. All right, but this says negative two. So we interpret that as meaning the opposite. So here's another meaning that we use for the minus sign. When used this way, it's the opposite of two times negative four. What is the opposite of negative eight? The answer is what? Eight. Okay, did you catch that? All right, we multiply two times four, two times negative four, which is the same as adding negative four plus negative four. We got negative eight. But this says negative two times negative four. So this means the opposite of two times negative four, which is the opposite of negative eight, which is eight. 
All right, let's try another. You may not yet have that down pat. So let's say three, two times negative three. No, I don't want, let's stick with the positive, negatives. Okay, let's do negative three times negative six. And I put that in parentheses so you won't have those two signs hanging out together and we won't get confused. All right, taking the same principle, we know that three times six is what? 18. Three times negative six is, what are you, what, what are you gonna say? That's gonna be adding either three sixes, three negative sixes, or adding six negative threes. All right, let's do the lesser. All right, I'm gonna add negative six plus negative six plus negative six and that's negative 18. all right but this says the opposite of three times negative six so the opposite of negative 18 is positive 18. okay are we getting it so let's see if we can do this next one without writing it down, without going through that process. See if you can mentally do it. Negative five times negative five. How many of you can write that answer without even going through that process? Because you understand that process. So the answer should be positive what? Twenty. Five, positive 25, all right? So we notice so far that when we're multiplying a negative times a negative, we get a positive answer. A negative times a negative, we got a positive answer. A negative times a negative, we got a positive answer. And I don't want you to just memorize the rule, I want you to understand why. Because multiplication is really repeating addition. So if we're adding negatives, we're going to get a negative. But because this is a negative in front of the first um, factor, we are going to say the opposite of that answer, which is the positive. So when you're multiplying two negatives, the product is positive. All right, let's take another set. So we multiply two positives, and we got a positive answer. We multiply two negatives, and we got a negative answer. So let's see what happens when the signs are not the same. All right, let's do negative two times five. Negative two times neg positive five. Now we could do, that's the same as five times negative two. Because multiplication is commutative. That means it doesn't matter which way, which order that you have it in. You, whichever order you can work better in, that's the one you need to use. All right, so five times negative two, that means I'm gonna add negative two five times. One, two, three, four, five. And I got what? Negative 10. And that is really the answer, negative. Ten. That is really the answer because we're multiplying the positive times a negative and we get negative ten. Okay? Remember two negatives gave us a positive, two positives gave us a negative. So we get negative ten. Another um, way we could do it is to add five twos. Alright? And we also would get the same thing. Uh, all right, let's go to another one. Um, 
6 times negative 3. All right, six times negative three just means to add negative three six times. And what are you going to get? Negative 18. All right. As this six times, we're going negative three. Neg on the number line, we go negative three. Neg keep going three, every three numbers on the numbers line, and we end up at negative 18. All right. All right, let's do another. Let's do get some space here. So integers are really interesting and easy because we understand addition and we know that multiplication and division, uh, multiplication and, and um, multiplication and addition are related. All right, let's do negative 4 times 9. That's, it says 9 times negative 4. So that simply means add 9, 4, four negative 4, 9 times. Or we could do the other way around. But since we have dealing with the negatives here and this is positive, let's keep it that way so we don't get confused. All right, so we're going to we would write down nine negative fours, and we know nine times four is thirty six. So if we add nine thirty nine four negative fours, we're going to get negative thirty six. And I don't think we can make it any easier once we understand the relationship between addition and multiplication. All right, so what have we said so far about multiplying integers? And this is what we have seen. All right, we see that when we're multiplying two positives, we get a positive product. When we're multiplying two negative factors, we get a positive product. When we're multiplying a positive times a negative, or a negative times a positive, we get negative products. So when we're multiplying like signs, like two positives or two negatives, the answer or the product is positive. When we're multiplying a positive and a negative, whichever order it's in, they are unlike signs, the product is negative. So, if you remember the relationship between addition and multiplication, you don't really have to memorize this, because sometimes we memorize this and can't apply it. But if you can see in your mind something other than just these rules, then you can go for it. And I think you will be able to do this. All right? So, let's take a few, and I want you to see if you can do them without my help. All right. Okay. Right, so I use the same numbers. So we know all these amps, all these products are going to be 30. So I'll do that for you. And all I want you to figure out is what sign is it positive 30 or negative 30? So let's take a moment and look at it and see. Six, positive 6 times positive 5. Negative 6 times 5. Negative 6 times negative 5. 
and 6 times negative 5. So just tell me the signs because just the answer 30 is not correct for all of them. It is the absolute value of 30, but some are positive and some are negative. All right, I'm pause for a moment to give you a chance to decide. Investigating integers, that's really fun and it's a fun thing if you understand it. It's a fun thing if you understand it. And so we're trying to understand it today so that we can apply it because we're going to apply it to some other situations. We're just learning the process now and we're learning how all of this works. But after this, we're going to use it to simplify some expressions and we're going to use it in working equations. So we'll see. All right. So what do you ask yourself? All right, I'm multiplying two positives, so the product is positive. I'm multiplying a negative and a positive, so the product is negative. I'm multiplying a negative and a negative, so the product is positive. And you don't have to write the positive sign, so I won't write it. And if you're multiplying a, neg a positive and a negative again, that's negative 30. So when you're multiplying integers, if they're like signs, the product is positive. And if they're unlike signs, the product is negative. Simple. So you got it. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. If you have a question, shoot it to me. If you understand, say, I got it. Let me know. Let me hear from you and see how you're doing with this. The difference in my tutoring this way is that I can't watch you and see when your antenna is going up and when it's not. But you know when your antenna is going up and when it's not. So if you got it, tell me you got it. All right, and the other process is, multi is division. All right, division. So that would like be like 4 divided by 2. And of course we know 4 divided by 2 is what? Is 2. Now you say, well how am I going to determine the sign? Well, this number is positive 4. And remember that we check our division by multiplication. All this is hanging together. So if the answer is negative 4, then the product of these two should be the same. All right, so let's check it. 2 times 2 is equal to positive 4. Because we're multiplying two positives, we get a positive. All this just hangs together. So we're not making it hard. All right, let's do... 16 divided by negative 2. All right. I think all of you know that it's going to be something that says 8. Because we know 8 times 2 is 16. But here we have to see if the product of negative 2 and 8 will give me positive 16. Okay. All right. So what, what should this be? Positive or negative? Uh, this should be what? Negative. All right. So when we check it, what do we have? Negative 8 times negative 2. equals positive 16. So we can always check ourselves when we're dividing. We know right away whether we got the right answer. Because I looked up there and I had failed to put my minus my, my negative sign and I knew right away, hey, this is not right. So I corrected myself. 
All right, negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16 because we just got through learning that we're multiplying like signs, we get a positive product. So this checks. All right, let's do... Um, Let's do negative 16 divided by negative 2. All right. Negative 16 divided by 2. We know the product of the absolute values is going to be 8. Now we have to decide is it positive or negative. This answer this, uh, is, is negative. And we know that a negative times a positive equals a negative. So the answer is positive 8. All right. Questions? Put a question mark if you're still in the dark. <clears throat> and I'll know that I need to do more of that. All right. Let's do... Um... Negative 32 divided by 2. All right, right away we know the answer is the product is, I mean, the quotient is going to be 6, 16. All right, so is it positive or negative? All right, this is positive. So this has to be negative because we're getting a negative over here. So the answer is negative 16. All right, do you get it? So actually it all hangs together because we can figure out our signs right away from the division by knowing multiplication. We can do the multiplication by knowing the addition. And so it all hangs together. It's all related. It's not a whole lot of different things separated. It all hangs together. So what are we seeing here? This is just like the multiplication. This is just like the multiplication. So if you're dividing two positives, you get a positive because a positive times a positive is a positive. If you're dividing two negatives, you get a positive. All right, because when you you add, uh, we've seen that a positive times a negative is uh, multiplying to check it. Positive times a negative is a negative. So again, the like signs will give you a positive quotient. The answer in division is called quotient. All right, let's do the unlike signs. When you're doing a positive divided by a negative, you get a negative quotient because a negative times a negative is a positive. That makes sense. We've already learned that. So each thing builds up on the other. I mean, you're dividing a negative by a positive. The quotient is negative because a negative times a positive equals a negative. So it's just that if you know the multiplication, then you know the division. It all hangs together. All right, so when we're dividing like signs, the quotients are positive. When we're dividing unlike signs, the quotients are negative. All right, so let's back up and look at all that we have done so far. Let's go back and let's put it all together and relate it again. Because when you leave, I want this, this um, tutoring session, I want you to understand how to do all four operations with, with the integers. All right, so when we're multiplying integers, we know that multiplication is repeated addition. And so if we add multiplying 2 times 6, that's adding 6 2 times. And of course, the answer is 12. All right. If we're multiplying 2 times negative 6, that's adding negative 6 2 times, and that's negative 12. Okay. 
if we're multiplying negative 2 times 6, that's the same as adding 6 negative 2, so the answer again is negative 12. And if we're multiplying negative 6, negative 2 rather, now keep it in the same order, times negative 2, all right, the product is what? Positive, because we're adding, uh, well, let's keep 6 so we can relate them all. Let's keep the 6. So the answer is 12, is the positive or negative. All right, we add two negative 6s, but we're doing the opposite of two negative 6s, which is negative 12, which is uh, positive 12. All right, so here are all the examples. Easy, easy. And don't say it's easy because I'm the teacher. It is easy to understand. Because when I finish, you should be able to do it as well as I can do it. All right, let's look at the division again. All right, let's say 6 divided by 2. Keep the number small because I don't want the numbers to be a problem. I want the, the process and the concepts to be understood. All right, all right, 6 divided by 2. And, of course, that equals 3. Positive or negative? Well, this is positive 6. So this has to be positive because 2 times 3, positive 2 times positive 3 is 6. And we said when you these signs are the same, the, product, the quote, product, uh, quotient is the same. All right, so we have 3, positive 3. All right, negative 6. Divided by negative 2. All right, that result is 3, positive or negative. This is negative, so this has to be positive because a positive times a negative equals a negative, unlike signs. All right, so we piggyback on uh, division, piggybacks on to multiplication. Multiplication piggybacks on to addition. All right, so let's do negative 6 divided by 2. All right, so we know the quotient is some kind of 3. Is it positive or negative? Well, it couldn't be positive 2 times pos positive 3 times positive 2 because we don't get a 6. This has to be negative. So when we are multiplying Unlike signs, we get the negative result, negative quotient. All right, let's do, which one have we not done? Uh, 6 divided by negative 2. 6 divided by negative 2, we know it's going to be 3, but we have to have a sign. Because it could be this 3, we're on the positive side, well, this three on the negative side, and they are not the same. That's why your teacher is not going to give you credit for having positive, negative three when the answer is positive three. They're not even in the same position on the number line. So that means you have done something incorrect. All right, this is positive, so this has to be negative. Negative times a negative equals a positive. All right. So again, in both multiplication and division, so that's easy to remember. Both of them, when you're multiplying like signs, you get a positive result. And when you're multiplying unlike signs, you get a negative result. So that's simple enough. All right, I hope you are understanding. And now you can work with integers. Practice makes perfect. Go online and find some examples and try them. It's easy enough. And then when we get to using it in other ways, other than just doing the process, the operation, you will be ready to work with it. All right, so we have learned then, last week and this week, the operations with integers, the addition, Subtraction, multiplication, 
and division. And I hope you can do it. So I'm going to put a little equation up here. I'm just going to test you today. I'm going to put X plus 5 equals negative 10. Okay. Because we didn't do any equations like that when we did our one step before. Because we had not talked about integers. So, we always go to the variable and say, what is being done to the variable? We are adding 5. What is the inverse of adding 5? Subtracting 5. We have to subtract 5 on both sides. Because what we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. Of course, we know when we add opposites, we get 0. So, now we have x on this side, and that's what we want to accomplish. All right, we have negative 10 plus negative 5, and that's negative 15. All right, questions? Now, you say, why did not I say minus? Well, I could have said it that way. I could either say negative 10 plus negative 5. We know we're adding two negatives. We're going to get a negative 15. I could have said 10 minus 5. And that's what? I mean negative 10 minus 5. And so that's negative 10 plus the opposite of 5, which is negative 5. So here we got it again, which equals negative 15. So whichever way you think about it, whether you want to think about it as addition or subtraction, it's still negative 15. Isn't that interesting? All right. How many of you got that? If you did, get it, get it, say got it. All right. So we have equations where we use integers as well. All right, let's try another equation. I'm pausing a minute in case somebody is trying to copy this. But I hope you were able to work it with me. And that lets me feel very good that you really got it. And that's what this is all about. Your understanding. All right, let's do another type. Let's do... Y, use another uh, variable, minus Y plus 6 equals negative 10. Keep the numbers easy because I want you to get the process. All right. So what is being done to the variable? 6 is being added. What's the inverse of adding 6? Subtracting 6. But we must do that on both sides of the equation. And we know adding opposites, we get 0. So that cancels that out. Then we just have y, which is what we want. All right. Again, we can think of that as nine, negative 10 plus negative 6, and I'm going to put that little equal sign, because if you keep an equal sign on every line, you won't forget to do the same thing on both sides. So negative 10 plus negative 6 is negative 16. Or negative 10 minus 6 is the same as negative 10 plus negative 6, which is negative 16. All right, and checking it. Let's check it because we always have to check our equations. So y, and plus y, we're going to put six, negative 16 plus 6 equals negative 10. So right here we're questioning it. it. Does it? Well, let's see. Negative 16, these are two. One is positive, one is a negative. All right. We are going to get a negative answer because this has a greater, negative 16 has a greater absolute value. 
We're going to subtract. 16 minus 6 is 10. So the equation is solved correctly when both sides say the same thing. Both sides say negative 10. All right. If you got it, say got it. All right. Let's do another type. And time is getting running out on us. But let's do another type. I just want to show you some application of that. Let's do, um, um, let's see, let's do y minus 5 equals, equals negative 14. All right, see if you can work that quickly. Because you learn how to do the one-step equations. Now you've learned how to do the integers. And so it's just a matter of putting it all together. And that's what math is about. It builds on. It's not a whole lot of different topics that are unrelated. One thing leads right into another and is used and it builds up to a big, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful math. All right. So... Here we're looking for y, and we are subtracting 5. The opposite of subtracting 5 is adding 5 to both sides of the equation. All right, adding opposites, we get 0 over there, and we get y by itself. y equals, and so we have negative 14 plus 5, which is going to be 9. Is it positive or negative? It's negative because the greater absolute value is negative. The absolute value of negative 14 is 14. And the absolute value of positive 5 is 5. So let's see if this really is true. So in place of y, I'm going to write negative 9 minus 5 equals negative 14. And some of us, you know, we cheat and we say, yeah, it equals it, but always test it to see. Because you should never leave a test with equations and not know whether you did it right or not. Because all you have to do is put it back into the original equation and see if it's, cause if it's correct. All right, this is negative 9 minus 5, which is the same as negative 9 plus negative 5, which is negative 14. And that is the same thing that we have on the other side. So this equation has been solved correctly. All right, time is running out on us. I hope that you have learned and We'll retain each week what we do because even if we go to another topic, some of the things that we have already learned may be used for it. So I hope you've understood and enjoyed investigating integers. Integers are very, very easy. And we can apply it to equations as you have seen. And next week I may start out applying integers to some other types of equations and maybe we'll do some two-step equations but we'll see anyway enjoy investigating integers retain it practice it and you'll be great mathematicians and you'll say it's easy just like i say it is thanks for being with me today and be blessed <music>